How would you like to grow really inexpensive elephant ears in your garden this summer? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how. You might not be familiar with this vegetable. It's called an edo. You can find them in a lot of grocery stores, and they're not very expensive. This is a larger bulb. These are a little smaller. So they're around 25, 35 cents. And that's Canadian. This will grow a really nice elephant ear and it's really easy to grow. The trick to growing these in colder climates is to start them early. If you're in a warmer climate, you can just plant them outside in your garden. But for us folks who live in colder climates, we want to get a head start on this so we get a really large plant with large elephant ears. The Edo is very similar to a taro, but they are different species of plants. What I'm going to show you here is the Edo itself. For some reason, my grocery store doesn't sell taros, but you could start either one the same way. An easy way to start these is simply pot them up. I use Promix here, which is a peat moss and perlite mix. This is a fairly large pot. It could go in a smaller one, but once it starts growing, it will make a lot of roots, and I'll want it in this pot pretty soon anyway, so I'm just going to start it in here. Now you figure out which is up and down. The bottom part usually has a cut piece on it. That's one way to tell. This particular one is actually starting to grow here. And so I know that this pointed tip goes up. If you're really not sure, plant them sideways. They're still going to grow. It doesn't really matter which way you put them in. But if at all possible, try to get the growing tip up. And I'm going to plant it so that the tip here is just above the soil line. Now my peat moss is a little moist, so I probably don't even have to add water to this. But if your peat moss is a little drier, put a little bit of water on, but not very much. There are no roots here, so there's nothing really to absorb this water except the skin of the bulb itself. And by the way, they're not really bulbs. The proper name is tuber, but as you can see, I can't help but calling them bulbs. They'll slowly absorb some moisture, and being in a warm room will also help, and then they'll start to grow. Once you've got a good green shoot, then you can water more. But don't water too much until you see that green shoot. If you water this too heavily, it'll just rot. So you're better underwatering than overwatering. Once you see a green shoot, though, you can start adding a little bit more water. <clears throat> At this stage, I just give it room temperatures. Uh, once it starts to grow, make sure it gets some good light. Once the growth is a couple inches tall, it really needs as much light as you can give it. Now let me show you another way of doing this. Take a paper towel, take your Edo, and just wrap it in the paper towel. And put it inside a back. Now we want some moisture in there. Not too much, we just want it damp. Close up the bag and set it on your desk or on a counter somewhere and wait. The tuber will absorb the moisture, that will get it to start growing, and it'll start making the new shoots and some roots. And once it's growing, then you can pot it up like this. Now why do this? Well, a couple of reasons. This is much easier to take care of just like this. The second reason is that it lets you examine the bulb and see how it's doing. And you'll learn a lot by doing that. In the soil here, you won't see what's going on. And there's one other little trick that I'll show you later on. It's been about 10 days, and it's time to do an update on my Edos. If you remember, I tried sprouting them two different ways. One way was growing them in pots, and the other way was to put them in a plastic bag with some wet tissue. Now let's have a close look and see how they're doing. This is the Edo I potted up. And if you have a close look here, you can see that it's starting to grow. What you notice first is that the top gets a bit red and then it starts making a spike. 
is a clear sign that it's growing. But let's have a look and see what's going on underground. I don't recommend you do this with your plant. I'm doing it just for the purpose of the video. What you can see is at the base of this growth is new roots coming, and that's fairly typical. Now you might expect the roots to come out from the bottom, but that's not what happens here. This is a type of corm growth. And what will happen is that this part here forms the new plant. And as this grows and expands, this will be absorbed and disappears. By fall, this will disappear. It will shrink down and this will expand to form the new corm. And the roots are growing at the base of this new corm. I checked the bulb here to make sure it's not squishy, which is good. It's nice and solid. This is exactly what I wanted to see. Sometimes what you see is side growths coming out here. And that's what happened last year to me. I had a lot of side growths. And in fact, some of them started growing down and they came out the potting holes at the bottom here. So what I did last year, I actually dug it up and I took the side piece off and planted it up separately. If you do get side growth, you have a couple options. You can leave them and what you get is a larger plant with multiple growing stem. Or you can take them off and focus on having one larger plant. Anyways, this looks quite healthy and I'll just pot it back up and put it back under lights and let it grow. I'll show it to you when it gets a little larger. Now I also started some this way. A wet paper towel around the tuber put inside a plastic bag to keep moisture in here. Now I found this suggestion on the internet last year and when I first seen it I thought this doesn't make any sense at all. These things are just going to get really moldy in here. So I gave it a try last year and it worked beautiful. The Edo started sprouting. I had no mold issues. I could see exactly what was going on and I really liked the method. So I thought I'd do it again this year for you folks so you can see the growth too. The problem is it didn't do so well this year. You can see this is covered in mold. And in fact, I took it out of the bag about five days ago and it's just mold everywhere. And I treated it with cinnamon powder. And that helps get rid of some of the mold. But even with the cinnamon powder, I've got mold here. I've got a mold here. I've got some more here. Now the tuber is still good and firm. So it's not killing it yet. But if it gets too much mold on here, it can harm it. And if you start getting rot in here, you have to get rid of that or the whole thing will just turn into mush. I put a second one in after I did the last part of the video and I didn't use paper towel on it. I figured this piece would keep it moist enough. And this one is also still firm, although the bottom's getting mushy here. But you can see lots of mold. Now it has a new growing tip here. And it's made a growing tip out the side here. But here's my suggestion. Don't use this method. I've been starting them in pots for a number of years now and it always works. And I never have a mold problem. So I really can't recommend this method. I'm going to take these two guys and pot them up and use my old method. I'll bring you back in a few weeks when these guys are bigger. It's time to do another update on my elephant ears. This is the one that's grown the best. You can see it's got four nice sized leaves. This one's just starting to open up here. It did have another smaller leaf, but it went yellow and I took it off. You can see the, the stem on this has gotten quite thick and the soil is starting to be pushed out of the pot. That means that there's a big root system in here and there just isn't enough room in here. And I think the plant's not getting enough nutrients. And I have to water this every day. It dries up every day. So the plant is struggling a bit. It's time to take it outside or to give it a bigger pot. Now, unfortunately, it's only around the middle of March and it's too early to go outside. So I'm going to pot this up into a larger pot. And I'm going to have a really large elephant ear by springtime. Now, I started this a bit early in order to make the videos. If you're doing this at home, what I recommend is that it doesn't get any bigger than this by the time you're ready to go outside. And that date really depends on where you live. Now, elephant ears can't take any frost. So find your last frost date and add two or three weeks to that. That's when this can go outside. 
and then work backwards and start this maybe two months before that date. If you start too early, you're gonna have a beautiful plant and maybe you can just grow it like this in the house. Now I'm growing this under lights. I have some high pressure sodium lights, so the lights are quite a bit above the leaves. For most of you, you're going to have trouble growing this into a larger plant unless you have a really sunny spot. But it's doing really well, and I can't wait to see this outside. It's gonna be a huge plant this year. I also started some other tubers a little later, and they're smaller. And by the way, I tend to interchange terms. I'm pretty sure I called these corms in the last video. They're actually tubers, which are like our potatoes, right? That's also a tuber. That's the correct botanical name. You grow them all the same way, so the name's not that important, but I did want to make sure you get the right name. Here we have two growths, and you can see the first leaves are quite small, and that's normal. Every subsequent leaf is larger than the one before. But this is doing quite well. It has two new growths in here. And this will be a nice large plant by the time it's ready to go outside. For zone 5, middle of March, this is about the right size of plant you should have. I have another one here that was started at the same time, but it hasn't grown nearly as well. And what I notice about this one is the center growth here hasn't really done very much. But it's made a number of side shoots. And I'm going to pull this out of the soil to show you what's going on. Because there is a lesson to learn here. And I'm also going to show you how to make more plants if you want them. I don't recommend that you do this next step with your plant. I'm only going to do it for the video so I can show you what is happening underground. This tuber is actually a bit mushy here, but you can see how these grow. It's very similar to a potato. New growths come out at various points around the original tuber. Now you could leave it like this and you'll just get a large plant with several growth heads. But because the leaves are so large, they generally get in each other's way and they don't grow quite so well. So it's not a bad idea to break these off. Now this can be a little tricky. Uh, that one came off quite easily. All the new roots are growing at the base of the new growth. So when you break them off, you end up with a nice little plant with a good root system. So now you can pot this up and you'll have a separate elephant here. Because this is rotting here, I'm gonna do that with all of these. I'm afraid that this rot will just get larger and affect these. The other reason for doing it is that this way they're less crowded when I plant them in the garden because I can put each one of these a couple feet away from the others. Now this growth is still too small and hasn't made roots yet. And this one is just starting to make roots at the base here. It's a little mushy here too. So I have a couple options. I could just discard this. I have three good ones. I don't really need this. Or I put this back in the pot. Try to keep it a little drier and hopefully the mushiness doesn't affect these. These will start to grow and make roots very quickly now. And now I'll get another couple plants. In fact, I noticed this one is already making one small root. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Put it back in here, take it out in three or four weeks when these are a little bigger, and then they'll have their own roots and I can break them off. All right, so your elephant ear is ready to go outside. You do need to go through a hardening off process, just like seedlings. These leaves have been getting a good amount of light, but it's nothing like full sun. So take about a week and move them out slowly, every day getting a little more, more light. If you want more details on how to do that, I do have a video on hardening off seedlings, and that will also apply to elephant ears. Now, once you're outside, there are two options for growing these guys. One is in the soil, and another one is in a bog garden or a pond, somewhere that's very wet. A couple of years ago, I split my plants into two groups, 
tried some in soil and some in water to see how they do. Which one grows a bigger plant? And I have a separate video for that. I'm going to put a link to that at the end of this one. Have fun with your elephant ears.